Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Mahashiach. Shalom Akim. This is your brother Hawiyala, uh, called to be a minister of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, by the will of our Heavenly Father Yahweh. And peace and blessings to you, brothers and sisters, throughout the four corners of the earth that have uh, taken hold to the faith and believing on the gospel of Yahweh Shai. Uh, today, just kind of just going into, you know, just really a brief lesson uh, concerning the Passover. Um, I'll actually have links as well to other lessons that have been done in the past uh, on the Passover, um, including how to, you know, simply keep it as well. Um, and also, you know, um, the different things as far as, you know, for some reason, one is not able to keep the Passover um, at this particular time. This, there is an option in the second month as well for one to take the Passover if they are unable to take it in the first month, which is actually in the scriptures. You will see that in, um, you know, uh, one of the lessons concerning the Passover. So I don't want to redo the lesson um, since it's pretty much, you know, goes into that detail. Uh, but for this the reason why I'm going into this particular lesson is because as we know the most high it can is going to take one or two of a family brothers or sisters may be living a spouse um, that doesn't believe or living with their parents depending on your situation and these things um, can sometimes be viewed as a hindrance of one you know being able to keep the Passover and you're wondering whether or not you should t you should keep it. Um, the Most High is um, one who is a defender of those that stand on his word because of the fact that this is our heritage. And one thing we have to understand is that not all of our the, the nation of Israel um, is going to um, be able to come back to the remembrance, um, believe in the gospel and being able to rehearse the righteous acts. OK, which includes even keeping the Passover. OK, so, you know, I uh, just wanted to kind of just go into just, you know, some of the a few things um, one just concerning the first passover of course during the time of when we're in egypt under moses this is hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24 by faith moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of christ's greater riches than the treasures in egypt for he hath respect unto the recompense of reward. For by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Okay, so we're seeing an example of, you know, one of, you know, our forefathers, Moses, um, who basically rejected you know that that particular world of uh, you know which at the time was Egypt was ru ruling, and you know by faith he kept the Passover. Okay, it's not something that you do um, because you don't believe. It's something that you do because you do believe, and you have faith in the delivering power, you know, of Yahweh, which in the last days he will do through his one and only begotten Son and the Messiah, um, the chosen. Of Israel, uh, Yahweh Shai. Okay, so this is, you know, part of what we would be doing. You know, you basically are going against, you know, this current system in order. They will be keeping, you know, the rest of Babylon primarily will be keeping, you know, the celebration known as Easter, uh, which is basically, you know, based on a Babylonian uh, worship. It's not based on, you know, what our forefathers were taught according to the law uh, of Moses, that is, as it is called. Okay, which was an ordinance that we were to keep, you know, from generation to generation forever. Even when um, those that inherit the kingdom, it'll be the same thing as well. Okay, and which will be kept. So, um, you know, we understand that brothers and sisters coming at different times. Someone might be newly uh, believing coming into the faith and may not, you know, within their first year or so uh, be able to keep it. You know, and there is a there is grace. We understand that this is uh, a time in which we're rehearsing the righteous acts. But as you uh, begin to grow in the faith, you, you know, you desire to want to keep more of uh, the commandments of the Lord. OK, now, as we go, you know, on and, you know, just to point out that, you know, Passover, uh, one thing with the Passover is that it has a heavier meaning, 
you know, for us in our captivity because of the fact that we know that according to, you know, the scriptures, our forefathers were in captivity in Egypt. That was the first time they kept the Passover, not in, not in the land of Israel, but in a foreign land in which they were made strangers, in which they were oppressed. And in these last and final days, we're realizing to come to the knowledge that Yahweh Shai is our Passover. Okay? And he was the lamb without blemish. Uh, that was the similitude, you know, of that. And that he was going to be the one that was going to bring about the deliverance. Okay? And, and that's how, you know, one receives, you know, salvation and, you know, their eternal life is through belief in Yahweh Shai and the gospel. Okay? So that's you know, part of the understanding of it, you know, in these last days, especially since Yahweh Shai came to the scene, it was revealed that that what it was about. Okay. So now we go over here. This is going on into, you know, one of the other captivities. Now, this is during the time of the Persian captivity. As you know, um, Cyrus was, you know, basically told, you know, by Yahweh that he needs to, you know, free those of the captivity, the Israelites that were scattered throughout all his provinces. And to, and to allow them to go back to build up, you know, the temple. Okay. So we're going into, you know, this particular part, which is in first Ezra chapter seven. And it says here, and the children of Israel, the priest and the Levites and the others that were of the captivity that were added unto them did according to the things that were written in the book of Moses and to the dedication of the temple of the Lord. They offered a hundred bullocks, 200 rams, 400 lambs. And 12 goats for the sin of all Israel, according to the number of the chief of the tribes of Israel. The priests also and the Levites stood arrayed in their garments, according to their kindreds, in the service of the Lord God of Israel, according to the book of Moses and the porters at every gate. And the children of Israel that were of the captivity held the Passover, the 14th month of the first, the 14th day of the first month after that the priests and the Levites were sanctified. They that were of the captivity were not all sanctified together, but the Levites were all sanctified together. And so they prepared, they offered the Passover. And so they offered the Passover of all them of the captivity and for their brethren, the priests and for themselves. And the children of Israel that came out of the captivity did eat even all that had separated themselves from the abominations of the people of the land and sought the Lord. And they kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days, making merry before the Lord for that. He had turned the counsel of the king of Assyria toward them to strengthen their hands in the works of the Lord God of Israel. Okay. So we know that with this, you know, we're talking about, you know, those of our, you know, of our ancestors, you know, that were in captivity and being able to keep this. And uh, it tells you that they also separated themselves from the abominations of the people of the land. Okay. Because those that were scattered throughout all those different provinces within the, the previous captivities from uh, Assyrian to the Babylonian to the Persian um, captivities uh, during this time had came together in order to keep this Passover. Okay, now not every, now that doesn't mean that everybody did it. Okay, but these are those that separated themselves. Okay, that came from from the captivity. Okay, that took on you know the decree and the, the hearing of hey that they're gonna keep it and they wanted they desired to also do the same thing. Now of course as you go through this you see that they had the Levites and the, the order and in the uh, you know all those different things. That's something that we can't do today. You know anybody was telling you that you could basically you know, bring about some kind of a uh, thing on that level, on that orderly level is lying because we've been scattered. You know, uh, we know by faith, you know, that by the household of faith that those that believe on Yahweh Shai, those are the same are the children of Abraham or the of the seed of promise, which are our Israelites. Uh, but no one can go out there and definitively say for certain that they are exactly, you know, this, the Levites, so they should set up you know, something according to them and, and, and set things up for the other people and all that stuff. That's not happening in these times. Uh, back then they had records. It was very different back then. Of course, we've were discontinued from our heritage 
and those that woke up are now you know believing on Yahweh Shai through faith okay now it's uh, as we are entering into of course the final years you know of uh, this captivity hopefully the final of you know the last you know of the last days of this captivity you know this is something that always brings back you know remembrance of the prior captivities so that's pretty much it you know i'm going to actually you know uh, put the links uh below and we'll probably be working on another lesson you know concerning this as well if, if you have any questions you know more than likely they'll probably be answered you know as far as keeping the passover in the links that will be uh, pinned below so uh, hopefully this is edifying and uh again I want to give all praises and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Peace, mercy, and blessings be unto you throughout the four corners of the earth that are gathered together under you know, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, to be delivered. Shalom.